Oh, so nearby Nisha, are you ready to talk about a ferret? I don't know why I'm like dancing and weaving, yeah. you can't see me. <laughs> Just Nisha's behind the camera like, do, 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 do. You do. Talk about ferrets and animals pooping. Do the thing that like, freaks me out about ferrets. What? Have you ever seen that people can just pick up and go? Whoop? They are they are weird. They're like kind of like weird looking like possums. Always freak me they're out. They're like living pipe cleaners. They're Isn't terrifying. Just long rats. <laughs> long rats. Since ancient man first gingerly rubbed two sticks together to create fire, human beings have been on a quest to harness the elements. The culmination of which is inarguably the Particle Accelerator, a device designed to harness the very building blocks of reality itself. A device that owes its history, in part, thanks to a shit-caked ferret. What? <laughs> My mind's just like, what? I don't, don't get this. Layman terms, please. <laughs> Anisha, would you like to hazard a guess, given the name Particle Accelerator, what a Particle Accelerator does? It just sounds like some sort of vehicle. Accelerator. <laughs> well, this, that's the thing. His particles accelerating away. I don't know. Because, and, and the old joke is, is that scientists are woefully uncreative when it comes to naming things. And the particle accelerator is exactly what it sounds like. It's a device designed to hurl the building blocks of reality at a quantifiable percentage of the speed of sound into random objects just to see what happens. So literally throwing things yeah, at, like, like, at you, walls. and Essentially, yeah, that's the thing. It's, it's the most advanced version of throwing shit at a wall to see what sticks. Right. I like basically okay. just throw particles at a wall to speed them up really fast just to see what happens. So what you might expect for a device that's primary purpose is slapping the very face of God with a dick made of science. Particle accelerators are built to highly exacting standards and they are massive. Uh, for example, the one we're talking about today, the one at Fermilabs, is about four miles all the way around. Jesus. And I think like particles like this big. Yeah, they are tiny. Can't like, see them. They're tiny. Yeah, it's about a big look. That's all we need. What? A lot of stuff like that. You know, like, when they try, like, when you try to comprehend how, like, small an atom is or how big a planet is, and they always show you just, like, balls next to each other. It was it's sim- yeah, it's just the simplest way to, like, show it, though. Yes. Yeah. Like, it's easy for me to understand. And then it's just, like, things like, like yeah, it's, it's, it's unimaginably, like, 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 the building blocks of reality itself. It's like, what are you going to do? We're going to throw them at a fucking wall. Just to see what happens, some crazy shit happens when you start to do that. I'm just thinking about those um, simulators. There's one on I saw on TikTok where it was just this simulation of a bus with um, just just an animation of a bus, and they just kept getting faster and faster. They kept crashing into like a wall, and it was like 200 miles an hour, and people were flying. Imagine it like being like that. It's just getting faster and faster, and yeah. there's more things being thrown at the wall. That's big little particles. So it does. Yeah. So we're just gonna speed up these various like particles and throw them at a wall, essentially, and just see what happens, like, you know, and we create some really weird stuff. And there's a bunch of, like, crazy bullshit that scientists and researchers have discovered by doing this. So it is very important. Well, not as important as the fact that the existence of particle accelerators is owed in part to a ferret. Like, how how does that come into this? Okay, so, as I said, like, they're very exactingly built machines, and they're not exactly designed to be, like, taken apart to be cleaned which poses a problem, given the fact that, you know, things get dusty, which I, I hate. I'm an adult now. Why is there so much fucking dust everywhere? I don't get it. But I do have to clean every day. What annoys me is you clean the kitchen, clean the pots, everything, and then you have to cook food, Yeah, more pots. It's just constantly. I, I think I've told the story before, but I think the maddest I've ever been is when our old housemate, remember this so Anisha? Our old housemate making toast. Yep. <laughs> well, I used to work at a race course just cleaning. And I'd spent from six in the morning till like one o'clock in the morning, like the next day, cleaning. All I get back, I just want some fucking breakfast. And the kitchen was a tip. I'm like, fuck it. So I cleaned down the entire kitchen, all that stuff. So I wanted to get myself some, like, you know, some beans on toast. The entire time, our how old housemate watching me do this, watching me do this, comes right in, makes some toast. Cuts it in half on the side, not on a plate. Eats the toast and gets all the crumbs and goes. <laughs> so for us, problem now. Yeah, it's the muddy down there in socks. And there's no one's me in socks. And you step on crumbs. Think, like, oh. the, the thing that annoys me the most is when people watch you clean, and they live there. Yeah, yeah. they watch you clean and don't even bother to offer to help. It's just like it does worse than that when someone watches you clean and then walks into the kitchen. Oh, yeah, and, well, <sighs> yeah, there is that. <laughs> 
It's like people, like, when, like, I think the one that always gets me is when you've got your hands in water in the sink and someone just chucks the plate into the face and they're putting on a like, no, I've got a cyst. <laughs> or I just can't find a tea towel. Like, and there's always something I need to, like, wash, dry my hands after washing. Like, I turn around, tea towel's not there. Yep. Why has it not been replaced? The cupboard's right there. Well, so we are speaking about animals today as well. That just reminds you, like, the Britain's most common owl, the tea. <laughs> the tea towel. Oh, for God's sake. There's one in every kitchen. <laughs> Why did, I, why did I not click? Oh, well, that's the thing. So, Anisha, let's talk about a ferret and how it cleaned a particle. So, you might be thinking, yeah. did they just attach a brush to a ferret? <laughs> and it wouldn't be that far off. So, uh, people working at Fermilabs, like, we don't know how to get inside one of these machines. Like I say, it's four miles around. Like, you can't exactly take it apart because that's going to take all day. Yeah. But at the same time, you can't, like, just get a big brush and stick it in there because there's no brush that's four miles long. And they were having a lot of problems with the thing. Like, we need to get in there and clean it. It might be dust. It could be, you know, maybe a bug got in there or something. We need to clean it out. Like, okay, so what do we do? So their thinking was, well, if we can get a string, pull a string all the way through, and then attach, like, a big brush to the end of that string. Yeah. So, sounds reasonable. How do we get the string through? And they just thought for ages, like, well, how do we get the string through? Until so someone suggests, like, she was like, why don't you just stick it on a fucking ferret? Like, honestly, they're like, stick it on a ferret. They thought, you know what? Yeah, let's just stick it on a ferret. Got a point. <laughs> yeah, I suppose, I mean, like, how do you get it to go all the way around? Is it just, is it a confined space? So it has to... One, just one big tube, yeah. Just like, so it has to kind of go around. The ferret could probably turn around inside the tube, though, and, like, you know... Just, only... What if it just stayed in there? I'm not coming like, out. Well, that's, that's always one of the worries. Like, what well, if I get stuck in there? What about if he doesn't want to come out? And it's like, well, no, ferrets are naturally curious creatures. They have no fear about going into a, a dark tunnel. It's what they do in the wild. Like, you know, people have trained them so like, they go down and hunt rabbits and stuff. Yeah. Like, they're no stranger to going around into a tunnel. Like we said, they're, they're weirdly flexible to the point where they can turn completely around inside a space that's, like, no bigger than their head. Yeah. So it wouldn't be an issue. Uh, so all they did is they bought one for $35, which is kind of why they ended up doing it. Because so that's what we're thinking. Surely all these scientists who built a fucking particle accelerator could figure out a way to clean the thing. I think they had multiple different ideas, but the ferry answer was the cheapest one. No, fair enough. Like they had a guy whose whole thing was like, we need you to figure out creative ways to cut costs. Yeah. Like, okay, we need to clean it. And they had a bunch of pictures of how to clean it. And just like someone said, Stick a fucking ferret in it. And that costs like, well, yeah, that that one of the pictures, I think there was an interview with a guy who says, yeah, one of the pictures we got would have cost half a million dollars. Getting a ferret costs thirty dollars on whatever it costs to like to house it and feed it. Yeah, well. So why not just buy a ferret? And if it don't work, then spend the half million to do the other thing. Then you've thing. got a pet ferret. And you also yeah, you have a ferret. It's like he's very good for around. So they bought a ferret, reportedly the smallest one the, the breeder had available, because they wanted to, you know, minimize the chance of getting stuck inside. They call it Felicia. I'm going to say, is that her name? Yeah, that name is Felicia. There are pictures of this. They're adorable. I will put them in the background right now. And Nisha, you know, you want to see the picture, don't you? You want to see, you want, you want, you want, you want to see the science ferret, don't you? Yeah, science ferret. Oh, so cute. Look at it. That's yeah. it at work as that's Felicia at work. On shift. Well, on shift, yeah. Well, that's the thing. He's doing a job, a very important job that was, like, you know, very advantageous um, uh, to the, the journey of science. And while the solution was admittedly quite ingenious, there is one issue with putting an animal inside of a particle accelerator. Would you like to hazard a guess at what that problem is, Nisha? Um, apart from like like the the thing I mentioned to be like you know not coming out and stuff, <laughs> um, it could be getting stuck or chewing on uh, parts of the machinery. Yeah, there was all those issues, and they thought, well, it's not like, there's nothing in there for it. So there's no exposed wires or anything. But oh, it might poop itself. Oh, of course, yeah. Yeah, it might shit. So that's the thing, it might shit inside the particle, so we just cause more issues. So, and the issue is why, like, uh, as I said, scientists who made this thing very smart, but not exactly the most adept when it came to creative problem solving, because their first idea was, why don't we just give it a bunch of waxer tips <laughs> so it poops itself, like, you know, out, and then put it in. I'm sure it would make more sense to put a little diaper on it. That's what they did, and until that guy I mentioned earlier, we'll just put a diaper on it. Why would you risk the, the ferret getting diarrhea or pooping sweat? Why not just put a diaper on it? Oh, yeah, so they got like a diaper for like, you know, babies that are like premature or something. Mm. Like firmly attached it to the ferret, put a little collar on it, which had a string, which was then attached to a brush. 
made it run through the particle accelerator. Uh, the first flight they tested it in, like, you know, just a, a section of pipe, and they kept making the pipe section longer, longer, longer. Mm -hmm. So they went in, completed, like, you know, the one mile journey around the section they wanted to clean. It's like, dragged the string back through with a big brush on it, cleaned the thing. Oh my God. And then they realized, well, yeah, there's no blockage or anything like that. Ended up being another issue. Yeah. Now I'm stuck with a ferret. Oh, no, like, no. okay, so what do we do with a ferret? So we don't want to give it away. People like the ferret. Okay, let's make the ferret a mascot. So they made it a mascot for the lab. He just lived out the rest of his days in a little cage in the lab as their mascot. And occasionally they'd let it run around inside the park. Let's all right, if thought they had this shit. It's so cute. Uh, but what we really say is that the ferret got a pension. What pension? <laughs> they gave him like a little pension, which they used to pay for its care. Oh, all right, I was going to say, where would that go? Well, the idea of that even... A fairy has better job benefits than I do. <laughs> Got a little pension, little studio apartment. Not not bad for a living pie cleaner, eh? Um, yeah. Did they clean it more than once then, or did they just do, just do it the one they time? They around a couple of times, yeah, until they realised it's, it's not an issue with cleaning it. There was something else and they fixed it. But, like, you know, Felicia got to run around the pie glass sorry, every now and again. Oh. Wearing his little diaper, his little work uniform. Imagine his work, your work uniform being a diaper. That'd be awful. What is your work uniform? Like, I'll put this nappy on and stuff. <laughs> just the indignant, you know, no bounds. Just a little bow or something just to make it a bit more classy. I love when they, like, put animals in, like, human clothes. Oh, they, them mm. ones where the dogs are in little shoes and they just can't walk. It's just, they just it's walk. so mean. <laughs> also, like, going back to the whole cleaning thing we were talking about earlier, another, um, also relates to animals is another thing that I have to clean daily is uh luna making a mess with the litter tray because she can't keep any of the litter in the train the thing is what she does she waits for me to clean up and like refresh it and everything and she'll go in and spray it everywhere i'm like you do this on purpose i think <laughs> my favorite thing like those videos you see online of like do like super advanced like cat litter boxes yeah you'll see how the cat walk it yeah and then you just see <laughs> not the litter cake thrown out is the cat oh when you walk past the litter train there's like a poo that's halfway in and I was like the cat didn't even try yeah the, we've had that a few times where I, I think I it was the other day actually I came in the evening and I was just greeted by just poop on the floor and I was like yeah. you tried but he kind of like missed the mark there so my friend still tells the story he says I will never understand how you got away with this where I, I brought a girl home to the old place I used to live well, I was living in the box room mm. where it was, there was room for a bed and a laptop. And that's where I lived. And they had a dog and the dog shit on the stairs oh. every day. And it's like, I never understand. You brought a girl out. She stepped in playing dog shit twice. Because after she steps on the way up the stairs, she goes into my room, washes her feet, steps in it again in the bath. And hugs and tells. He's like, I don't know how she didn't leave. Well, that's the last thing. After you've stepped in shit once, it doesn't matter how much shit you step in. Mm -hmm. He's like, I just can get used to it. It's not the thing. He's like, one of the he's like, once the poo's on there, it doesn't matter how much poo there actually is. But yeah. It's just the inconvenience of having to keep washing your feet, I guess. Yeah. And the smell. I imagine the smell's terrible. Yeah. And that's what happens though when, you know, you just, you, you live in as a student and just, you get a dog. Yeah. Oh my dog. For just there was shit everywhere. It was all oh. Yeah, that was the story of how a ferret helped the, you know, progress of the particle accelerator. It was such a cute story. I love stuff like that. It was about how rapid it was. So nearby Nisha, like uh, as you mentioned a couple of times that this video, you have a little cat. Yes. Little, little Luna. Yeah. Like uh, is there any idiosyncrasies of your cat that you would like to share with the audience right now? Because I know like when you own a pet. You always, like, everyone's like, oh, cats are the same, like, they're not. Once you've, like, had a pet, like, there are so many little idiosyncrasies to each pet. So it's like, oh, like the little personality and yeah. stuff. Yeah. They, they do. I know she's, uh, she loves playing, um, what is, I don't even know what to call it, but what she'll do is, like, she likes playing with string. Uh -huh. And then um, what I do is, because I thought I'll tie the string to, like, she's got a little donut toy. So I thought well, I could dangle the donut on the string, but no, she likes the string end. So I'm like, you hold I'm the donut. holding the donut. And I like, move the string around to chase it, blah, blah. And as soon as she grabs it, she pulls it out of my hand and walks away with it. She carries it into the kitchen and then back again and drops it and meows for you to, to play again. And she'll do that constantly. I'm just like, where is she Where is she taking it? What do you get out of it? It's just, it's just cute when she carries things and she does it in like 5 a.m. in the morning. Mm -hmm. She'll jump on the bed and just drop the string on the bed and like, playtime, like, no. Like, what <laughs> is it? 5 a.m. 
Oh, I love stuff like that. I will never forget. I, I'll, 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 never, I'll never skip an opportunity to bring up this video, which is once when you're on like a YouTube rabbit hole, and you don't know how you end up there, but you do. Yep. And I ended up watching this like YouTube clips of a show called like My Cat is a Nightmare Monster thing or something like that, hosted by a guy called Galaxy Jackson. Oh, what? And like, for everyone at home, Galaxy Jackson looks exactly like you expect for a cat, for a cat expert called Galaxy Jackson. I don't even know what Like, he's got like a crazy beard and a bald head and all that stuff. I am Jackson Galaxy. Hi, ready for a ride? I love cats. I've worked with cats for 25 years. One of the episodes is, my, just saw the headline, like, Galaxy Jackson, my cat won't stop eating donuts. And I'm like, what? <laughs> There's like a screenshot of him, like, and then this cat that's just meowing at a donut. And it's, it's one thing I shouldn't laugh, but just... Because obviously these are, these are people who are struggling to look after an animal and they're asking for help, well, how do I care for my animal? We're just... It's so fucking funny, the amount of shit they get off this cat. Because they're there, there's this guy, well, I work nights. Mm -hmm. I'm a truck driver, like, you know, I need to sleep and my fucking cat won't stop meowing for a donut. <laughs> and like, you can't meow that much and they've got like their little footage that they record around their house. It's meow, meow, meow. Meow, Some monotone meow, meow. Just like that. And it's like, just meow, meow. And it's like that. And constant. It's like, you, it would drive you mad. Yeah. And then they say, so like, well, what, why is the cat meowing? Like, well, it's hungry. Why is it hungry? It's like, he wants a donut. It's like, the cat doesn't eat donuts. You could he wants some chicken. No, because I don't want no chicken. Hold the donut out. Cat goes mental for this donut. <laughs> and, he, and Galaxy Jackson's like, I've never seen a cat eat a donut before. And this cat's all in. He wants his donut. Oh my God, he's eating the donut. Your cat's eating donuts. Unbelievable. Something that shocked me early on was uh, we had like a takeaway and it had some chips and I, was, I, I thought if I let her sniff it, she'll realise, oh, I don't want it and then she'll leave us alone. I was like, well, cats don't eat chips. So I let her sniff this yeah. chip, stole it, ate it. I was like, what? <laughs> it's like all those, like, I love those pictures that are taken as the cat is midway through stealing food. He's <laughs> <laughs> like blurry and you see like, oh, I'm getting a picture of like my lunch. You can see the cat head coming in. Well, speaking of like cats and donuts, there is a picture that, um, I think it's one of Adam's favorite pictures because it's of Ruby from like, um, she's like, she's my 18 year old cat. And <laughs> um, she's, I think it was like 2010. So she would have been like five. Yeah. Where I'm, I'm like practicing some like fast, like short speed photography. And I'm, she liked donuts, but she wouldn't like meow crazy for them, but she would eat them. So there's like pictures of me flicking like little bits of donuts towards her. And I'm like taking a picture of it midair. And she's got like, she's staring at the donut and like her cheeks are so chubby. And it's just, just like, Rrr. I love the solo shots of like um, cats midway through doing that. Oh, like when they like, um, when they fall off of things. Because obviously they're so like, Perfect and graceful as they walk, and then they just go, yeah. When they like walk on the edge of a bath and fall in, it's like, yeah. One of my old cats used to do that. He'd walk on the edge, and you could see his paws like wobble. You know, like you're gonna go, and it's just wobble, wobble, and then next minute, <laughs> fucking hilarious. But yes, let us know in the comments if you also uh, have got an idi idiosyncrasies for your pets. And if you'd like to share some pictures of your pets, if you go to our Patreon, you'll get access to our Discord, where we have a dedicated channel for sharing pictures of your pets. Cheers, everyone.